So today I want to talk about these digital degree wheels. Half inch chuck, steel box painted, holds the Wixie digital angle gauge. It's a 180 by 2 gauge, so that means to get 360, you get two sides of 180 degrees right there. So that's nice because that covers pretty much any type of porting you're going to have in the saw. And if you're over 180 when you're measuring total degrees, it'll only be 5, 10, 20, so it's easy to add. But this is the way they come. Black painted, half inch chuck, chuck key, and the digital gauge. So I just want to go over how I set them up, use them, a couple different methods, where they work good, where they don't work so good. So you can ditch your old wheel and go digital just because it sounds like the cool thing to do. So we'll get talking about these, show a little bit of do's and don'ts. This is just the rough bare bones version that I've been using for quite a while. These are listed on the website, but I've had a handful of people ask how to zero them, how to set them up, how to read them. So I just want to go over a few ways. This is a 500i that I'm working on. So what I like to do, set the piston all the way up top dead center real close. We'll mount the gauge on. That way the numbers are pretty close to vertical. Tighten that right down. Then you can use the chuck key. If I normally go off the clutch side with these, we'll slide the cylinder on. I like to make sure I have at least bolts in the opposite corners. That way you know that you are indeed in the correct spot. Alright, so that's just an approximate top dead center right there. Then, what I normally do is on these piston port engines, I just line up off the intake side. The intake will be the same on both sides of top dead center. This one's a 500i. They run quite a bit of intake. So I'll roll it. It's at top dead. Roll it backwards until it just closes right there. You can see there might even be just a smidge of a gap. But right there, we'll make note of that number. That's 93.2. Now roll it back to top dead. And then it starts closing again. Right there. That's 80.5. Now we take those numbers, and true top dead center will be the same on both sides. So 92 to 85, that's 12. Come back to zero. And we're going to split that difference. We're going to go six degrees more on this side. Zero it. And we'll check again. Right there when the intake closes. That's 86, 7. We'll go back to the top. Check it on the other side. That's 86.0. So that is super close. You know, so we'll do the same thing. We'll split that 0 0.7. We'll go 0 0.3. It needs to be on this side of zero. Right there. Double check it one more time. Right there, just as the intake closes. Eighty six eight. Go the other way. Just as the intake closes. Eighty six three. Now that's within about a half a degree. All right. So there's that way. Then the other way, now this style piston stopper doesn't fit the 500i. 
So, but you can also use a soft material hard stop at top dead center and do the same thing. You'd come up, hit your stop this way, read the number, come back the other way, hit your stop, read the number, and it'll be right in the middle. But I want to try this other way. Where that's the other nice thing about this type of degree wheel. So right here, this is counterclockwise rotation, opposite the way is the saw will run. But we'll set it right here where the intake cracks open, and we're going to zero it. So it's zeroed there, and we're going to get the total intake duration. All the way up, intake's open. Starting to close. Right there. Intake closed. 173.4 would be the total intake duration. Now you can take that number, divide it by 2. That'll be at what time your port opens. So, you divide 173.4 by 2. And you come up with 86.7. Okay, so we got 86.7. Now, if we come up to the top when our wheel says 86.7, that's 96. Eighty-six. Let me get it. Point seven. Now that'll be top dead center. Zero your wheel right there. And we'll just come back and double check. But on a piston port, the intake's going to be the same on both sides. Right there. Eighty-six six. Right there, 86.6. So that's within 0.1 of a degree. So I'm going to say that's going to be the easiest option to set your zero. Now that is at true zero. Because we went off the intake port, divided it by two. And that's super easy to do, just pushing the button. That was actually easier than trying to shoot past it, come back, come back, split it, split it, split it. So that's going to be the method that I'm going to adopt from here forward is just measuring the total duration on the intake side and splitting it. All right, so our, our wheel is zeroed. Now we need our handy dandy flashlight. Right there, we're going to call that 99 degrees on the exhaust on this one. So this one's already ported. Nice thing about the decomp on the side is when you're checking the transfers. You can look right through the side hole. Same thing. As soon as those crack open, that's when you want to check it. One twenty. So we got 99, 123 on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's 120.2. That's 120.2, so that's what we got on the transfers. So this jug would be timed. Eighty-six point seven on the intake. Ninety-nine on the exhaust. One twenty on the transfer ports. And you can do the same duration thing. 
<clears throat> you can do the same with duration. If we run this right there at our 99 that we know it is, zero it, down, so that's port open. Now we're closing the port back off. Right there. 162.2 duration on the exhaust. And we can do the same with the transfers. So we got transfer fully open. And now, transfer close. 119.2, duration on the transfers. And with this wheel, it's best to leave the power head stationary. So if you did all your numbers just like this, Lay your cylinder out, stick the ring in the bore, hit the numbers that you want. But do not move this power head around. Let's see if we can get it to do it. While on camera. So right there, we've got 108.6. If we move it this way, still 108.6. That's 108.8. Let me face it towards me. That's 109.4. See, so if you move it all around, you know, you're going to get different readings. That's 112.2. So your best bet is going to be to keep it on the bench. And it's even not a bad idea to mark. A couple of spots so you know exactly where you're at because you can move it around move it around and as long as you don't move your wheel on there all right what do we got we got 1098 right there I marked it I'll slide it back here 110 1 1095 110.3, let's come back to our marks and see how close we are. 109.9, so within half a, half a degree. So as long as you mark it, you're going to be real close. That's the same thing. If you chase that point, point whatever degree, you're going to drive yourself insane. Just round up or round down. If it's 0.5 or less... Call it the smaller number. If it's 0.5 or up, go one up. So 80.5 would be 81. 80.4 would be 80. That half a degree is going to be super hard to catch anyway. That may or may not be what your bevel is. That's probably less than what the bevel is or chamfer. But that's just a few different ways that we can use this. Same thing, you can look through the exhaust port to see it, but the best method, once you eyeball them, is to actually set your ring in the cylinder. Set your ring in the cylinder to get the true time. Alright, so... With the wheel zeroed, come down to the bottom. Then you slide your ring in.
Now this ring method works a whole lot better on flat top pistons. If you get a dome or anything like that, it'll actually be a few degrees off because of the angle of the dome. But on these flat tops, you can double check all your answers with the ring. So we'll take it up. We'll do the transfers first. I went a little bit past, so I would have to, since I went a little bit past right there, I'd have to take it off, push the ring down, and double check. But since we're you know, in the ballpark, just want to show you. That's what you do. You just line up to your ring and then you mark your line. And then you hit your line. As long as you don't pull your wheel off, you can always come back, check your progress, everything else. But you do that with the transfers, do that with the exhaust, and you're good to go. But I had a few people asking, how do you zero them? How do they work? What's good about them? What's bad about them? Once you get used to it, you... You can hold them anywhere on your bench. They fit pretty much every power head just the same. Where the wheel, they have to be hanging over. You have to be blocked up with an actual round wheel. Here's the normal round wheel. So you can see quite a bit bigger. Center line wouldn't fit on the bench like that. So if you like doing bench work, this fits a lot nicer. Still plenty of room to get over here. You can clamp it in your vise. You can do whatnot. But that's your normal wheel. Normal wheels, 90 by 4. Every now and then you can find a 180, 360. This is 180 by 2. So unless you're dealing with durations above 180, you can still do the durations. But it's just a simple addition past 180. But that's pretty much the gist of how these digital degree wheels get timing on a piston port engine. Now if you're trying to get timing on a reed engine, you'll have to measure at top dead center. You'll have to zero at top dead center because there's not really a good intake port to zero the wheel off of. But all these piston ports, just zero it like that. Get your total duration open on the intake, split the difference at the top, and that is true top dead center. That is the thing. At top dead center, there's this very small amount of movement right here, and at bottom, called dwell time, where the rod ratios, everything is just right, where you can get a couple degrees of rotation, but there's no vertical movement of the piston. So when you measure the port just like that, that compensates for that dwell time. But I just want to show everybody, that's how I use it. That's a couple different ways you can use it. And if you're interested in getting one, check out the website. Have a few of them ready to go on there. Hopefully everybody has a good day. Thanks a lot, everyone.